You're watching the FileMaker News Network. Bring you the latest in critical FileMaker news, as well as trivial gossip. Miles Debsky with Internet Weather. And our field reporter, Jacob Taylor. Anchored by our award-winning team of Margaret, Haley, Jeremy, and David. You're watching FileMaker TV. Today is one of those days we only get out the explosions on really good days, and we have a very exciting day. Nothing like Slack being in the way or uh, Zoom being in the way of my screen, all the little windows that floats around it. So I want to welcome everyone here. Welcome to FMTrain.TV, where every day we're training at 1 o'clock on the FileMaker platform. Today is a very exciting day because kind of most of you kind of missed this yesterday because they didn't really call it a product launch. Claire's kind of kind of product launch yesterday. Um and then they didn't really demo it. So uh, it, whenever they do things like that, it makes my job real easy because all I have to do is break out the product and I look like a rock star. Uh, but we actually have a great opportunity to ask questions and uh, talk about uh, maybe things that weren't talked about yesterday quite so much because we have Rick Kalman, who's the god of FileMaker, who's here with us today. Mr. Kalman, how are you? Great. How are you doing? Good, good, good. So we had a, a kind of a, a good conversation a little bit ago with the Los Angeles user group meeting, but we wanted to talk about, um, you know, uh, what was discussed yesterday. And I, I don't even know where to start with this, right? There was a lot to absorb. But let me see. So let me bring up this slide right here. This is a slide that came up and we were editing a little bit uh, yesterday. Uh, so what Claris has done, and, and, and I will put pause in here, Rick, if you want to kind of articulate or comment on this a little bit, but FileMaker is developing new technology. We've talked about Mongo before. We've talked about the Claire Studio before. It gives us a lot of capabilities that we don't have, a lot of scalability into the future we would like to have. Um, and at the same time, they don't want to break everyone's solution. So what Claris has effectively done is I'm going to use the F word. They've kind of forked the platform to a degree. Uh, once again, I'm using non-approved words here in this conversation. But what we have is the current product line over on this side, which is what we call the FileMaker platform. This is what we have had. This is what we know. This is what we use. The, they basically took their existing FileMaker Pro, Go, Server, WebDirect, and they mirrored it over to the other side. So you see this over here, right? And what they did is they did a minor file change format change to it. So instead of FMP12, with on the other side over here, you're going to use essentially what feels like almost identical products, but they use a dot Claris file extension. And so the two sides really don't communicate uh, in real time to each other. So you can have a FileMaker server, you can have a Claris server, and you can have clients that access those. The future is what Claris wants to do is this is kind of preserving all the capabilities of the things that we have had, the FileMaker platform. We preserve it. We don't break anything. They talked about their North Star. We've had lots of conversations here on the live stream about this, about not stranding people, not breaking their solutions. Um, and so they're leaving the FileMaker platform in place over here, and they're continuing to make improvements and modifications to it. Um, at some point in the future, probably years down the road. I don't know how long that would be. And if you ask Claris, if if Rick says he doesn't know how long in the future it is, it's because literally he doesn't know because they only have a, I, I get a sense of a real, real good feel of what they're doing for like to say the next three months, maybe, maybe six months. I remember them talking about Peter Nelson is the VP of engineering saying, hey, what are you going to be doing in a year? And he had no idea because they're running really short in terms of we're going to build this, see what the feedback is been build this and see what the feedback is and they're changing their trajectory like a fish swimming upstream based upon their feedback they're getting we were talking about this with the los angeles user group just a couple minutes ago and uh and the idea is that that you can buy over here the the filemaker platform right the current platform we've had we've loved at the current time the price is unchanged there is a price change all products go up about 10 percent uh september 23rd thereabouts so if you want to renew before then, not a bad idea. If you buy this item over here, it's about another 10 or 15%, 20%, whatever. It's a little bit of a markup on it. But when you buy this over here, you're going to get 
um, the new products over here. And what a lot of people didn't understand is you also get all these products over here at the same time. You get the entire, the entire thing, right? The only uh, line item that you can purchase that's extra is the cloud servers where Claris runs the server for you. And it's and that's a, a additional charge because they have to actually set up a server for you, a virtual server. Um, and so the idea is that all the great new features are coming on this side of the world over here. Um, and you want to kind of try to see if you can get yourself to a point where we don't have these dependencies. Uh, I mean, we, there's dependencies on the right side over here that, for me, are kind of showstoppers. Like, I personally need OAuth. Jacob Taylor, the guy in, the, in Zoom over here, would cut would come after me with a knife. And I know he has a knife because I got him a very nice knife. He would come after me with a knife if I said, hey, we're going to go back and not use you know, Azure or Active Directory or OAuth anymore, right? Because um, we, we've, after 30 some odd years, we can converted to that. That's an important thing for us. So was talking to Rick this morning and I said, hey, you know, these are known issues, Rick. What, what do we want to say about these as being known issues that if we can add the features over here, then everyone could just magically migrate over, right? Is that kind of the conversation a little bit? I'm coming at this kind of at 900 miles an hour what are your thoughts on that? Or do you want me to just uh, kind of leave you alone? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, what I would say regarding that is um, what you see on the right-hand side. So let me back up a second. So think of the Claris platform as a superset of the FileMaker platform. Think of all the things that the FileMaker platform now currently is as just rebranded as Claris. Right, same product, different names. One is .fmp12. That's the FileMaker side. The new side is .claris. Same code base, same functionality uh, between the two sides. Right. The uh, exception being that on the Claris platform side of the house, the the old FileMaker, the prior to being rebranded FileMaker side, um, has the ability to communicate directly with the Claris Studio, uh, MongoDB um, backend, the, the, you know, the Claris Studio cloud, um, similar to how you've been for years uh, communicating through um, uh, external, external SQL data sources, except for we're not communicating with SQL, we, both, we own both sides of the pipe, so we're just communicating with ourselves. So the big difference is that the Claris, rebranded Claris products uh, communicate directly with Claris Studio. Uh, also, they all require um, the um, Claris ID to access anything. But th what that means is they also no longer require the license server and licensing certificates. As long as you have a Claris ID, you can access these files. And then there is a facility in the Claris Pro side to be able to push tables from Claris over to Studio. Imagine you have a layout that was simply used to collect uh, data or you know, some sort of lightweight uh, thing and that you would rather have it on the Studio side, make it public facing, uh, maybe serve it out to anonymous users uh, and you don't wanna re-enter that. So you just push the schema over uh, and then it flips around. So what was a Claris Pro, um, native table now becomes a shadow table in Claris Pro, and that table actually exists in, in Claris Studio. When you push a table from, um, from, file, or from Claris Pro uh, over to Claris Studio, uh, then it will show up by default as a spreadsheet sheet view. But then from there, you can take that. And, and again, it's already going to be connected um, to the Claris Pro side. And from there, you can turn it into dashboard views or Kanban views or um, uh, um, you know, uh, detail views uh, and all of the things that Claris Studio has. Um, the other thing is, think of the Claris platform, is everything that FileMaker currently is um, with the ability to connect to Claris Studio, with Claris Connect thrown in. So that's the whole platform. 
Um, but as, as uh, Rich said, um, we are evolving very quickly on, on the new stuff side of the house, especially uh, Claris Studio and some of the integration we'll be doing um, with Claris Connect. It's moving very quickly um, and um, getting it in the hands of folks sooner rather than later to begin to get feedback so that we don't go too far down any path or don't add a bunch of functionality that is not going to be used by uh, a lot of people initially. Um, you know, we, we want to uh, get this out sooner rather than later. So the reason we're keeping the FileMaker platform around simultaneously is there are use cases or uh, with, especially with your deployments that aren't yet served by the new Claris platform. For instance, we don't yet have Claris Cloud that complements FileMaker Cloud. So if you're deploying a FileMaker Cloud and that is a requirement for what you want to continue to do, then you're going to wait for Claris Cloud to be there. Um, actively working on that now, that should come soon. If you need to work offline, we don't yet have a version of the Claris platform that can function completely offline, but that is a competitive differentiator of ours that we can run in a hybrid world. We can be offline. We can be in cloud or we can be a combination thereof. Um, we don't yet have a concurrent licensing connection uh, license type. Um, so if you have a, a license where you have 100 users, but they don't have to be named, uh, and, um, you know, as an example, um, then you may want to continue on the FileMaker platform until we do. If you have larger organizations and you're using Active Directory because you don't want to enter uh, each individual individually, um, or you're leveraging OAuth, then you might stay there. If you are connecting using ODBC or JDBC, until that's available on the other side, you might stay with the FileMaker platform. Uh, and then the, the first thing I mentioned is the um, file extension. Uh, if you can't yet move everything over um, from .fmp12 uh, to .claris, uh, then you might hold out for a while. So as, as Rich was saying, the, the, well, the FileMaker platform will continue to exist, we'll continue to sell it, we won't touch that. The, um, the, uh, and that'll be available until all the functionality that's required for you guys to do what you do with our platform um, is there on the Claris platform side, then there's really no reason to keep two around. In the meantime, if you do um, buy into the Claris platform, as Rich said, um, along with that comes the entire FileMaker platform. The way I would, would look at this is this. Think about FileMaker that you've always known for as long as you've known it. Some of you 35 years and more. Uh, many of you well over a decade and many of you well over two decades. So think of that, that you've always known and built um, your livelihood on. That is exactly the same code base as on the Claris side. Same thing, right? No difference whatsoever, except for those small things at the bottom of this slide. Um, and um, so, uh, and I would say that it is the foundation piece of the Claris platform. It, the Claris platform is not anywhere close to as capable as it would be if it was missing that key foundational piece, which is built on top of FileMaker. Uh, and uh, so um, it's, and as we build out the FileMaker side, everything will be inherited on, on the Claris side, that's the same code base. Uh, our intention eventually is there's just one, less confusion, less choices to make. Um, but um, until we have all the power necessary to meet all the, the requirements that you have for the different ways that you deploy the platform, uh, we will have to. Um, if you remember, if you've been around long enough, when we made the, the last really major uh, leap forward with the platform back in the FileMaker 7 days, where it was a fundamentally from the, you know, from the core, a brand new product, um, for a time, several months there, we continued to sell FileMaker 6 well, we rolled out FileMaker 7. If you also remember, it was many, many months before there was even FileMaker Server 7 available, even after we shipped the clients. Um, and, but there were people had the time because they were relearning the product. But eventually, we only sold FileMaker 7 and beyond. But for a time, um, you know, when customers still needed to deploy, still needed to add seats, you know, without going through a radical change. So it's similar to that, nowhere close to the gravity of the change, um, you will be utterly familiar with everything 
that um, the Clara side, uh, uh, pro side of the house does because it's the same as the father. Anyways, uh, that was my long monologue, uh, Rich. Yeah, and I want to apologize because the uh, my opening wind up on this, I just came right out of with David Knight and Wim and a whole bunch of people. And so I'm going about 10,000 miles an hour. So real quick, um, a couple of people just joined us here. Um, I'm going to pop open this slide right here. There's a couple of slides from yesterday that were really quite good. Um, let me hit this one right here. So this is the Claire's platform. We were talking about this, right? It's multiple pieces, right? It's the piece that we've had, we've loved for years, the FileMaker piece, right? And then we have this new Claire's Connect, which is this I, um, uh, API integration kind of capability that simplifies that, which is great. And then, th and we've demoed this, shoot, we demoed this with Andy LaCates a week and a half ago, a week ago, a week and a half ago, uh, the latest version of Studio, right? So uh, Andy's been on the show. It's been great. Um, the idea is that Claris wants to, you know, we want to modernize and, and improve the platform. And in order to do that, they don't want to break kind of what we already have in play, which is kind of the whole idea. I'm going to get rid of myself over here. Um, so we have the current product over here. Over here, we have all those products plus some additional items. Plus over here is where we eventually get the free version that's going to help drive new people, new awareness about this platform. This right here, I think, is such a huge thing. We've been asking about this for forever, right? Uh, <laughs> and uh, the having you know people go to the, the Apple uh, store on the Mac or some sort of equivalent store on Windows and downloading FileMaker although it won't be called FileMaker, it'll be Claris Pro for free. And then meanwhile, it also comes with a single single user license for the studio and things like that. Um, this is a huge deal, huge opportunity over here. And so we need to get over here. We need to modernize the platform. It's an important item. However, there's some things that we need on existing installations. For example, I mentioned uh, a little bit ago, and I'll mention it again, RCC uses OAuth. Right, so we need to have that. So they have to build this arrow over here onto this side before I at RCC can actually really use it at our core operation level, our core our core system level. Um, someone did ask a question just a moment ago. Um, you know, what about uh, the FileMaker Cloud, the server kind of cloud service that they provide? Well, that's over here, and it's an optional item over here. Um, and then over here, it is will be an optional item as well. So you can buy the FileMaker platform or you can pay extra money and buy the FileMaker platform with the cloud hosting service. The same will be over here with the Claris platform. You'll be able to buy the kind of the base platform with everything here. And then if you want Claris to do the hosting for you or for your um, for your FileMaker file, I am just going to call it that for now because if I call it a Claris file, it'll confuse people. Um, uh, that you'll be able to buy that as well. So that's an extra uh, optional service. Um, people are asking about this question about uh, this issue of Linux only. Um, the idea that here, here's the issue that's gone on for years and years and years with the Claris. Whenever I would have, they have meetings and secret meetings and kitchens and this, that, and the other thing at, at Claris, they would have these conversations about, well, how do we simplify the product line because we're putting a lot of engineering time into um, our products. For example, we have the free CRM. I have eight versions of that CRM in market, okay? Eight, as in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we make a bug fix in one place, I got to push it eight places. And so instead of me paying one engineer once to do it, I have to do it eight times. And that's kind of the issue that Claris has with a Mac server and a Windows server, et cetera. They're trying to simplify the platform. That way they can iterate and make improvements much, much faster. So if this is Linux only, I know some of you say, well, I really want a Mac version. I personally use a Mac server at my home just for educating me and keeping me fresh with it and I play with it. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with that myself. It's kind of a, a sore spot for me, but the benefit is that Claris won't be tied to investing in that. They can iterate this platform faster to make it do great things faster. Does that make sense? So it's a money saving, um, thing, but they, what, instead of not really saving money, the money gets redirected into propelling. It's like fuel for the rocket to more fuel. Instead of the fuel off of here, we're going to put the fuel into the main thrusters to push us forward up ahead. Because I'm watching the conversation um, on Discord. And I haven't had a chance to welcome a bunch of you. Just trust me, I can see all of you here. A bunch of you, bunch of people are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
Yeah, so this is very exciting. So what we did manage to do, Mr. Taylor, you want to give us a quick uh, walkthrough. We built, this morning, we built a new Linux server. I'm going to hit stop sharing. Yep. And we have the new uh, Claris server. And, of course, it's running in Linux, and we're doing it on AWS, uh, kind of the normal EC2 uh, kind of technology, Mr. Taylor. Yep. Sorry, and we're going to... So so you built this this morning. In fact, yep. I purchased the plot. I purchased this thing full price this morning, <laughs> so I could get it. And here it is. We have it. Yep. And uh, so, what do, what do you want to? You know, what do we need to know about this? Um, it there's there's basically like kind of two or three notable things about it. Um, and notable if you've worked with the Linux, the previous versions of the Linux server, basically. Yeah, one is it still says FileMaker on the label, which is uh, humorous, but I assume that'll get uh, picked up at some point. No worries. Um, the the big one actually, so there's no license certificate anymore. Um, Rick said that for Pro, which, oh, okay. Um, that actually applies to the server too. Um, so one of the, the I'll say it's a, it's kind of a new requirement, if you again, if you've played with the old with the the FileMaker Linux server, um, there was an option where you could install it. You know, it was kind of a, a tested thing where you could install the server with in a, with a graphical environment. Not like you wouldn't use the command line to install the software, but it was compatible with like Ubuntu desktop or something like that. Um, that's now required, and the reason for that is because to like license the server rather than using the license certificate, you sign into the Claris ID. Uh, associated with that team. Um, that's how. So I'm going to interrupt. Can you repeat one more time if you want to kind of exit out of this window briefly here and show sure. us what we're talking about? Um, so normally Unix is command line hell. That's why I've never really been a, the biggest fan of it. That thing? Um, <laughs> that's that's that. Okay. Yeah, but then, that's but the then end there, of is, install. there is a desktop interface for it. How do you access oh, that? Yeah. Yes. Um, this is just because you got. Uh, Sorry, the Zoom thing's in the way. Firefox is full screen. This is the desktop environment. So this is, it kind of looks like Windows or kind of Mac or kind of something, right? Yeah. So this is the desktop interface for Linux. Is it a specific brand? Is it a... Uh, this is Ubuntu. I set up Xface because XFCE desktop environment because that was the one I could get to work in the, given the time constraint, basically. Um, okay. I There's a default one for Ubuntu if you just... There's, you can look it up online. There's like install the Ubuntu desktop and it's all the stuff that makes the actual desktop rather than the machine being command line only, essentially. Okay. Um, that one I couldn't get working as a short version. And so I found another guy that said do this instead. So I'm a Mac guy. So I'm, I'm over yep. here. And so if I had you, if I had you help me build my Linux server and have this desktop here and I got to this machine, say it's in my house for some reason. Mm -hmm. Sure. I came over here, and if I double click this or click on it or something, does that actually work? Does it fire it up? Yes, it does. Yep. Okay. So once you get through the Linux installation, everyone, then the admi this administration here, go ahead and log in, Jacob, because everyone should sure. probably see this. This is cookie cutter, the same stuff we've had. In a lot of ways, this product, the product release today is a and I'm not picking on Claris. It's kind of a nothing sandwich. It's like nothing to see here, right? It's the same stuff we've been playing with. It's the same technology, but now it's it's there's really this Claris platform side. Once again, I would come over here and I would scribble this out. There's a Claris platform server. There's a Claris server, um, which is an on-prem server, and then there's going to be the FileMaker server, the on-prem server that normally is what you see us play with. Right, mm -hmm. but the but the difference is with the Claris platform is it has access to the studio that we we played with with Andy Lacase. Remember, we were working on the sample file, building the charts. It has the Kanban board. It's got some really neat stuff in it, only to get better, which is great, which is really great. The Christian works for me says I'm relieved to not see huge changes. Yeah, I think the change is just having two platforms and really these two extensions on here. So, for example, Jacob, when you put a copy starting point on here. Can you walk verbally? Tell us what you said a little bit ago. It didn't. It wouldn't sure. Go. Yeah, it wouldn't go. I I I made the the obvious mistake. So you guys can see here we have our the new version of FMSP Lite. I just went and downloaded it and grab, grabbed a recent copy. Um, I I put like the FMP12 version. I I file copied it to the server and like tried to host it, thinking 
<laughs> you know, uh, that why not? It might, why not? yeah, time. that it might do that. Um, I didn't listen to Richard yesterday and cause it's like, Oh, we have a new file extension that didn't click that. Oh, it, what it just literally won't do it. Uh, there's no like, Oh, it shows it to me and says, Hey, you need to convert this or, you know, the, it, it doesn't do that. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. But, uh, it says, you know, I tried to force it open and it tells me there are no compatible files. And I went, Oh, that's my little, you know, my little light turning on. Um, so I fired it up and this is the same one that's in the background. Um, I fired up the new Claris pro, uh, that I downloaded and installed. And there is on, I think I can do this. Is it create new? That's the home screen. There's a big convert button right on the home screen. And so I clicked that and I located the FMSP, FMP12 and hit save and had it, you know, check the box to rename as old or whatever. Uh, and then I put that one up and that's what we're connected to right now. I did nothing else. Also, um, it just did it. So. Real quick. If you quit, quit sharing just briefly here real quick and I'm going to flip to my screen. Um, we're both kind of between the two of us. We have a pretty good set of demos here. So um, right here are the two files that we see. So this was a copy starting point we had. If I double click it, it goes into the local copy of FileMaker Pro. I think it's admin. It's one, two, three, four, something, whatever it is. So this is the local copy of FileMaker Pro here with the CRM. Right, so this is that design with the aesthetic, the Nick Hunter neomorphism design aesthetic. Um, but if I want to run it in FileMaker, so if you look over here in my application directory, I have a couple copies of quote unquote FileMaker Pro. This is Claris Pro over here. These are the the first couple ones that we had that were test. This is the one from this morning or yesterday morning. Um, this is Claris Pro. So this one over here requires an extension of the dot Claris here. So when I took uh, this file over here and I dragged it on here, basic, it says, hey, you want to convert? Though this is like the standard conversion. I have seen this on and off since FileMaker 3, some variation of this. Would you like to save an old copy, save the old copy, do a conversion on this? And if you say OK, then it goes through this um, process, uh, wants me to authenticate into the file. And it goes through this little conversion. Really not a lot to convert. It's a pretty lightweight conversion. But it helps separate these two sides of the platform. So for those of you wondering, what does FileMaker Pro look like versus what is Claris Pro like? So this is FileMaker Pro over here on this side. Oh, I actually, it opened it. <laughs> it opened in uh, Claris too. Let me try. Let me open that. Let me see. Open with, give me a, like a 19.5 win. There we go. All right, let's try that. So this is FileMaker Pro. Conveniently enough, it's essentially identical, essentially identical. Here is the Claris Pro product, essentially identical, except that there is a name here, uh, or, or the, uh, the FileMaker Pro, or the Claris Pro, I should say. And then, oh, it's kind of mad at me. I'm going to quit it real quick and see if I can reopen it. Um, I was going to have it show me the About page, and it's uh, so now it's happy. I say about Claris Pro. Yeah, I was yesterday I was kind of like, whoa, 40. So we jumped to the future. So so Rick, your your advice is don't pay attention to the version numbers too much. Yeah, you know, we're we're pretty much gonna get away from version numbers, but on the off chance that we will go from a FileMaker 19 to a FileMaker 20, we didn't want a Claris Pro 20 and a FileMaker Pro 20 colliding on each other with some of the design functions and, and things where you can interrogate uh, which version of the file you have or oh, your, okay. uh, minimum version number. So we just decided to jump 20 versions, but we'll we'll never really use that. It'll be in the, the about box if you need to call support and tell them what version, you, specific version you have. Other than that, you should need to care about. Please clarify, is this or is this not publicly available? So let me deal with the easy question first real quick before I jump back to Jacob. So, so if I go to the Claris website real quick, let's just cover this real quick. So this is claris.com. You go to their website, uh, and if you go to, to pricing and buy it right now, it's not really on here. What you need to do is how I found it is I scrolled down to where I found, um, and I, this is all kind of work in, progress, work in progress. Claris is working very rapidly. In the ideal world, I think this would be a little smoother. But you go to Claris Studio. Claris Studio, really, this page should be the Claris 
uh, platform. The Claire's platform bundle, Claire Studio is part of that. But to buy it, you scroll down here at the bottom and you say, hey, let's buy this thing, right? So if you scroll, 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 down here you can find the buy button. And I actually did this this morning. I went in there, I bought this, took out the credit card, I paid $1,125 and bought this this morning. So, um, so I got, so as part of that, I can show it to you, but I can log on. And, and here's the thing with this very, very, very important. And it's, it's been missed by a lot of people. And I'm going to reiterate this in the slide real quick. If you, um, if you buy this over here, this is for the time being, this is 900 us dollars for a five seat of this product, the, 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 the FileMaker mm, classic, whatever you want to call it, call it FileMaker. It's the, it's the product that we know and love. Five seats has been 900 bucks for a long time. All the pricing goes up on 10% uh, on December 23rd. So let me state that officially. So this is 900, it'll go up 10% on the 23rd. This right now is a little bit more money because you get more stuff with it. You get the Claire Studio, which is which is going to get is good and getting great, getting better. You get Claire's Connect, which is API connectivity. Um, they're rolling it all into one price. This is at the time being per the website that went away or wherever I put it. It's uh, eleven hundred and twenty five dollars, and so it's a little bit more money. Here's the thing. If you buy this one right here and you pay the extra money, you get all of these products here and you get all of these products as well. So originally it was kind of under the idea that you buy this one or you buy this one and you got to pick one or the other. And the salespeople, at least my salesperson was losing their mind trying to understand that. So you can buy this one. It's kind of the, the file maker is the, the, I want to say the legacy, but it's kind of this classic one that we've had for a long time. This is where all a lot of the um, development effort, the new technology effort, the Mongo, the scalability effort, all the really great things that are coming in here um, are part of this. If you pay the extra for this, you get all these versions. You're actually going to get an installer for Claris Pro. You'll also have an installer for FileMaker Pro. You'll have an installer for Claris Server for Linux. It's what I gave Jacob. It's what he just installed. You'll also have FileMaker Server, Mac, Windows, and Linux, right? So you get everything if you buy this. Now keep in mind, this just, just, just uh, became available this morning for someone off the street to buy. I can't actually resell it yet under our training uh, packages and stuff. So it's still not fully out there everywhere yet. So some of you say, hey, I want to get an amazing training package bundle with all this. Uh, Claris has not turned that on yet. That's a, a sales uh, function within the sales department at Claris. So when we when we're able to do that, we will. But just today, this turned on. In fact, last night this didn't work. I tried to buy it last night, and this web page actually didn't work. And we had the one question from Dennis. We'll let's we'll, we'll see if we get to uh, Jacob here. Any word on on when they will change the freemium platform for individual users? Let me just hit this one real quick. I'll save Rick on this a little bit. The the freemium will be over on this side over here you will get at some point in the future and Claris, I don't think has a date. If they have a date, they haven't said anything. I don't think it's this week or next week. At some point they will make freemium available on this side only. Okay. Which means you'll be able to go to the Apple store. You'll get Claris pro. You'll probably give them your information and you'll probably also, I believe Rick, you're going to have access to Claris studio and connect potentially as well. Yes. Yes. That's the intent. Cool. So you get a complete ability to try this out and get addicted to it, but it's on this side. So there will never be a free one over here. One of the reasons which Claris doesn't talk about this is the piracy is a little out of control on the FileMaker side. Over here, if if people get the freemium, um, they have to have a Claris ID. It's authenticated from the Claris server, right? And so they just can't have people trying to sell copies of FileMaker for $7 on eBay, which is still a thing, apparently, I found out. Um, if I misspoke, Oregon Dean, I'm going to correction on this. The prices are going to change. Uh, last day to buy the prices before the price increase is September 23rd. On September 24th of this month in a couple weeks, the prices all universally go up about 10%. Um, question from Twitch. When I add a field in studio, the new field doesn't show up in Claris Pro. Does this feature not work yet? Um, the field will... We did this with Andy LaCase. If you want to go back about a week ago and do a demo, I'm not prepared to do that demo right now. But 
the field if you resync the fields they will show up as of yesterday a container field in studio will not show up yet in claris pro i'm assuming that that will get fixed or turned on at some point because yep. that's an obvious thing we need to have that right so it's it's gonna it, it will it will be coming this is a good question for rick and then we'll jump to uh jacob a uh, question from Larry. Larry is a retired U.S. Marine. He says, so the Claris platform will have concurrent connections at some point, question mark. That is critical for our business. Yeah, I mean, we're still working out the the licensing and pricing model for this. Um, uh, but we understand, obviously, the, the use case. Um, so it, regardless if it's a concurrency license or some other way of getting at um, why you would use that because you know that you have a straight up named user model if you will you buy 10 users and you put 10 different people in it or you buy a concurrency model where you have the right to say use up to 10 but it could be 100 people as long as there aren't 10 more 10 people using it at the same time so uh, and there are different models shift work is a, is a good example where you have three shifts working you know 24 hours a day um, and rather than buying, you know, uh, uh, one for each individual, you just buy a concurrency model. Price works out about the same. Um, but yes, um, if that's critical, that be would be a reason for you to stay with the FileMaker platform and, and, until um, we have uh, something with parity on the Clara side. Cool. Uh, real quick, so. Um... There, there's a web page right here. Margaret's going to help disseminate this link here. It's on Claris' site. So while this right here is kind of the lightweight, essential items that you need to know about the kind of the differences that maybe you should be thinking about, there's kind of a more, uh, actually not this one right here, this one right here, differences, this one. These are the differences as outlined by Claris support, the differences between the two sides. So one side is over here. This is the FileMaker side. This is the Claris side. Um, you see the file format difference here. I, I see the questions about file format. We're going to jump to those momentarily. Um, I, I was looking through this list a little bit ago. Um, I, for me, you know, ODBC, we need to have that support. OAuth, we need to have that. Um, one of the things that we're going to have to manually tweak and fix will be the extensions, right? Because the extension over here, this one won't recognize FileMaker extensions, right? Um, the Claris product platform won't recognize that. So on the FileMaker side, we have to go and fix that. So it'll be kind of, that's one of those things that'll be a manual, you know, when the court was talking about that about an hour and a half ago, it's, it's something to consider as you're planning your migration or your move. Really, there's not that much to migrate. You want to create a test server and test everything out on the new server, make sure your essential functionality works before you commit to moving your organization would be my suggestions, what we're going to do, right? Um, but this one right here is a known uh, one that will probably have to be uh, manually tweaked. It won't auto fix itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not that big of a list of things that gets broke. It's really the, understand that it's really Claris Pro is FileMaker Pro, really, at the end of the day. It, it absolutely is that. Um, okay, so real quick on the file, uh, for, on the file conversion. So, um, so when I took this file over here and I dragged it, it created the new one right here. And so if I double click it, it goes into the product, it goes into, um, Claris Pro and it's all great. Um, if I close this file and I, and I, I did this uh, last night or yesterday immediately because it's like, is it really, 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 really different, right? And so I go FMP12 and, I, and it says, warning, you really wanna use FMP12. So I have manually changed it back. So I'm going to drag this over to wherever it went, it's over here. I'm gonna drag it over to one of my copies of FileMaker. And it, if it, if this worked, it, these should be able to open it, right? And if I drag it over here, it says, "Warning, this is uh, was created by uh, Claris Pro version 40, and it, and and so it's more than just a file extension, but I don't think it's very heavy duty. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of surgery going on underneath the hood. I think they're pretty close, um, but they are different. So once you, at the current time at the current time, I say this one more time, at the current time, um, you can convert one way only. So don't strand yourself. Make sure you keep a copy of FM. Like for example, see people are gonna go, hey Richard, are you gonna distribute starting point in the Claris uh, extension? I'm like, kinda yeah, I guess at some point I have to figure out if we're gonna have 
uh, a side of downloads for FMP12 and a side of downloads for Claris. Although you could take the FMP12 and drag it over there, but that's an extra step that the user would do. Is it unnecessarily complicated for them? As a third-party solution provider, we make the free CRM, we do other things like that. That's a consideration. I wanna remove the friction points. So I might have a set of Claris files and a set of FileMaker files, which then means that if I have a bug, I have eight versions of starting point, now I'm gonna have 16 versions of starting point, which could get unwieldy really fast. Two questions from Alex uh, Spring Carroll. Is there an upgrade plat path to the Claris platform? Are there issues or limitations with converting from? Okay, well, well I guess no, we're covering that right now, right? Okay, so uh, Alex is not quite following the, 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 the diagram here on this uh, real quick. So let me just, uh, well, those are in here. Um, I don't know if I have the original slide here or platform fork maybe. What? Nah, it's this one I've been drawing on. It's my problem. Uh oh. Uh, so here, here is the deal. I mean, Rick, do you want to try to swing at this and get? Uh, he's he's not fully understanding. Um, no internet access or offline support. So yeah. So the the, the current FileMaker platform, obviously, you can run it completely behind your own firewall. You don't. You, you, you may need an internet connection on Windows to install, and it. it needs to you know grab some bits but for the most part you can be locked in a high security environment not reaching out to the internet completely you know um no access right uh, in, in that sense whereas the claris platform you need to um, authenticate with the claris id which needs to ping uh, the the claris services um, to validate and that's one of the reasons we're able to get rid of the um, the license certificates and license servers so if you cannot run in that environment, you're a highly secure, say, governmental agency that you know has strict requirements, then you're going to stick to the FileMaker side until the Claris side can fulfill that requirement. Yeah, so I'm going to demo that real quick for people who, you know, we've been doing demos on Claris Pro and the Claris Studio, but some people are just showing up today. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Claris Pro. So once again, this is the the side without uh, offline access at the current time. What you can do, keep in mind, is that even on Windows, I think you can actually have FileMaker Pro installed at the same time you have Claris Pro. You could actually still be running both as a as a professional developer. You're going to have some customers that will be on one side or the other. You're going to need to have both apps available and potentially both running at the same time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this menu item right here. This is the big difference between FileMaker Pro and Claris Pro. FileMaker Pro, you have to put a license key in, do this other stuff, kind of antiquated. This right here is this Claris ID. So what I'm going to do is if I had just installed this, it would not say switch. It would say, what is your Claris ID? It would throw up a window. In fact, you can't use Claris Pro without having the ID. When you first fire up Claris Pro for the first time, you're going to get this window right here. It won't say switch, it'll say, put in your Claris ID. This is how you're going to authenticate yourself to make sure that you are a licensed user. Now, eventually, if it's freemium, you'll still have this information here as a single user. It'll be free, you won't have to pay for it, um, but it'll just be, you won't be sharing data with other people, it'll just be you playing with the platform, experiencing the great things it does, but you're still gonna have to log in over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in an email that I have for this. Um, it's support one at fmtraining.tv. And I've been told that I have to change from FM to something else uh, because I can't be old and out of date. Um, and I'm gonna put my password in here. Put your TV, not your TB. Yeah. Oh, sorry, thank you. TB, okay, so. So right now it's going to go to Claris through the internet, authenticate, and then basically bless this copy. Now this copy is now blessed. This Claris Pro is blessed. It's running. If I quit, if I reopen it, so I've authenticated on this. This as I opened it up, it went out to Claris's server. It connected. It said, "Hey, it's Richard Carlton. Is he good? Yes, he's good. He can come in." And because I bought a five pack, it also Jacob did the same thing with his server. If we want to back jump back to his server, I'll quit sharing. Um, I'll stop sharing here. You can jump to his to his screen real quick. But that is the same authentication that his server uses. But that license I bought is a five pack license. RCC has a site license for like thirty people, right? So at some point I'm gonna to have to take that license 
and upgrade it. And then I'll be able to use the Claris Pro and the Claris Server and all that stuff at all our corporate operations. When I invoice customers or Jacob puts his timesheet in or whatever he's doing, right? Okay, so this is a great question. I'm going to tee this one up. Here comes a, 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 I'm pitching at Rick. Is the FileMaker platform going to continue to develop new features until both platforms are the same? And that's really two questions. Will they become uh, the same, and are you going to build features for both? Yes, because they are the same. So any features in one's got to be in the other, right? Um, uh, the only exception would be things that are specially and specifically related only to those things that come with the Claris platform. So for instance, um, the ability to connect directly into studio data, right? Um, that won't be a part of FileMaker. It will be, of course, a part of Claris Pro. Um, and um, we won't bring Claris ID uh, into the FileMaker side, uh, th those kinds of things. Um, but um, the anything that we're doing will be in both sides. Any So for instance, right now, currently we're working on um, in the next release on the FileMaker side, the ability to have script transactions. Um, we're beginning to, to do that work. That will be inherited on the Claris Pro side of the house uh, as well. Um, anything that we build on one side um, uh, that is straight across what we would have done in FileMaker, we'll do in Claris Pro. They're the same thing in that way. And then there'll be a difference. I do not believe we'll go too far down a path where there's a radical departure besides the very basic connectivity into uh, that. There, there may be some new script steps in, in the future that allow you to, to call directly um, Claris flows, Claris Connect flows um, for workflows and, and that sort of thing. Um, those would be some minor differences. Um, uh, with the real intent is eventually there's just one platform has all the capabilities of FileMaker and it's just rebranded Claris and then we go on from there. Um, we're really not interested in forking it or leaving one behind uh, because they're the same code base. That that would be much more expensive for us to, to maintain two separate code bases than it would be just to base one to be a subset of the superset of which is Claris side. Uh, there's a question right here, and I I, I will take this one. Um, it's from Ruben. Why do why do they keep Clar Why do they keep Claris Connect around? I don't know anyone that uses Connect. I think, um, and that way Rick doesn't have to respond to this. I I I think that Connect was launched kind of backwards in a weird sort of way in a not a really developer centric way. There was some really funkiness with the way it came out. It's pricing is not great. Um, that being said, it's being rolled into the overall platform. Instead of it being a separate expensive item, it'll be, uh, in, it'll be built into the platform at what say, Stay, just for the moment, the, the price of the Claris platform bundle, this enhanced bundle is 20% more, whatever it is. Well, for an extra 10%, I get Claris Connect. I'm willing to pay for that. And for an extra 10%, I get Studio. I'm definitely willing to pay for that. And then it all becomes one integrated kind of system and solution. And that allows us to use it um, cost effectively. Um, I remember when Claris Connect first came out and Andy the case goes, why aren't you using it? I said, well, I have to write you a check for $15,000 a year to replace because of the licensing to replace what we're doing with open APIs, right? And I said, I, I love, I love Rick. I love you guys. I'm not going to write you an extra check for 15 grand just because um, you think it's a good idea. Um, so I, I think that they realize that, but it has value. It, it's important, uh, important part of the puzzle. It was just kind of created as an almost like an outlier and launched out there by itself. Um, I think now it's a more integrated thought process at Claris integrated conversation where we have pro we have go hey we have studio we have Claris connect and Claris connect you know in my mind I don't even know that you even call it at some point it might just be part of the platform it just works it's the oh well, we're in FileMaker we're in studio and we just say hey let's connect an API and it just does it instead of me thinking about some you know third party or third product that's in here doing stuff um, I think it if the cost is cost effective, you get the developers behind it, it grows, it gets their synergy behind it. I think it, it goes where it was meant to go originally to really help the platform. I, I, I see that being an important thing.
Uh, Peter Greens, Greens. Hey, Peter Green, how's it going? I have a heavily uh, cha I Okay, he has a Margaret. Where's that question? I have a heavily changing employee list. Um, I have seasonal workers. How do I register? Log in my five user pack with Claris ID. If every three months my employee list changes, that's a good question. If uh, yeah, I think that's I, your. I think that's the the concurrent use case that is not yet addressed. Yeah, that could be. That could be the concurrent use case. I would take that offline. It's not, not. I I think unless Rick, you want to speak to that. I think that's. No, I think you're correct. I think you think about it. There's two fundamental models, at least currently with FileMaker, um, probably end up having to be on the Clara site. One is named user, right? Yep. And the other one is capacity. Um, I can have up to ten users. FileMaker doesn't care, Claris doesn't care who those 10 people are or the name user, uh, and I have 10 slots. And once I give it a name until I swap it out and give another name, I can, it, it's the names. Um, so um, one doesn't care. You don't have to plug in a name. It just has capacity and one cares. Um, that those are the two fundamental different models. Yeah, Josh Orman just said, hey, if Claris Connect had a BYOC, build your own uh, connector, I'd pay for it. Yeah, I think that's uh, – originally that was Spark supposed to be part of it way back in the day. So um, I think that – and I was talking about this an hour and a half ago on the LA user group. I, I think uh, – Jacob, just jump back to me. Quit sharing just for a moment. I'm going to jump back to me. I, it's it's kind of an important – because we're kind of running up the top of the hour here. Um this issue with these two sides of this, um, this has to happen because we need to propel the platform forward, but we don't want to break everyone. This, as an as an immediate step, immediate like if you just take it, things are more. It makes things more complicated. But I think this is the we're taking our medicine before we get all the benefit of what the medicine does for us. I think we have to make this step. Uh, Rick would probably say it differently, but we have to take these steps. So gives Claris the, the the bandwidth. It gives them the 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 runway. I would say for them to continue to really build this out and give us new new amazing features. If you go back to yesterday's, um, I guess product launch is kind of a, a funny name for. It. I didn't actually realize it was a product launch until Rick you, this morning. You said, "Hey, it's a product launch." I went, "Holy <laughs> really?" So um, there was nothing amazingly like wowing in there. The wow. We're taking our medicine right now. We have two platforms. Eventually, a lot of people here, including myself, will migrate to the to the Claris platform, still essentially FileMaker. This is the medicine we need to take temporarily, but then we're going to get really great new capabilities out of this platform. We're going to have product announce, announcements where we're going to be blown away with the stuff that we can do. That's really great. That's really great. Uh, David Knight asked me, what was the last time you were just totally blown away with something? And I, I remember the first time I saw Rick demoed, Rick Kalman here demoed script triggers for me like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, whatever it was. And I was blown away. I said, I have to have that tomorrow. I want it right now. Take my money. And those days are coming for us in the, in the community. Uh, I think you've, um, it, I, they're doing great work at Claris. This is kind of a necessary uh pain point medicine, you know, take your syrupy medicine from your mom or dad or whoever. Right. Um, but it's, it, we have to do this because they don't want to break what we have, but they have to break some things to move us forward to get freemium. They have to lock down the platform so people don't steal it. Right. And so that's why freemium is over here with the Claris ID. Okay. But every legitimate business person or user that I know of has no problem with that. It's only if you're trying to, you know, sell FileMaker and eBay for $7 a copy. We've got, like a collection of questions. I just don't know which ones you want to take on. Did you see the Apple ID versus Claris ID question? Good question. I don't know anything about that, Rick. Do you know anything uh, address Apple ID versus Claris ID or is it? Yeah, there are two different, obviously two different things, but uh, what's the question? The question uh, is basically why do we have Claris ID instead of just using Apple ID? Uh, because Apple ID is something very specific that's used by Apple for very specific things, and Claris ID needs to have uh, functionality that we're under con control over, uh, including where it goes to authenticate itself and the behaviors that has, uh, is the underlying answer. So uh, it's a little bit more generic, you know, have, asking everyone in the world to get an Apple ID if they need it or not. Um, you know, yep. Yep. Internally yep. to Apple employees, absolutely. They have to have it and we do support it. 
Um, but for the rest of the world, it's not as broad as something a little bit more generic. Yeah, so I'm I'm very excited by this. So uh, so uh, we're gonna everyone will. I mean, I guess as as you folks have updates, as Claris has updates, feel free to share those with us. Let us know what's going on. If we want to come back and do more demos, and if we start seeing some amazing GWiz stuff that we really really have to have. Other questions from anyone else? Uh, right? Yes, got a, a huge group of people here. Go, I know there's a lot. Go. Um, so I'm just kind of picking and choosing. Oh, uh, one studio web page. Uh, interacts and receives information okay this is kind of one studio web page can interact and receive information from existing table now it is only web to table why uh okay so i'm not i don't understand the question so basically on the claire studio side and we're not demoing that right now we did it a week and a half ago with andy there's a back-end data system called mongo it doesn't really matter from this conversation what it is but it's very scalable very professional very high horsepower the Claire Studio allows us to have web pages that interact with that. People can see it on a web page. They can see it with a form. They can see it with a list view. They can chart it. That data is a two-way exchange with your mm, FileMaker Pro file that could be hosted on server, right? Once again, I'm, I'm using the word FileMaker there to draw attention to that, that FMP12 file, which is now a Claire's file. Um, it's a two-way data exchange. The data can be in both places, right? But it collects and it stays on Mongo. So even if FileMaker is not running, it's still there running uh, around the clock 24-7 on, on the magical cloud in the server. Okay, next question, Margaret. Uh, will AD user ID work with Claris ID when Active Directory works? Uh, uh, Claris has made no official announcements on Active Directory other than they would like to see it uh, supported and resolved somehow specifically what that looks like i don't have any feedback on that nor do, do we yet know other yeah. than what the outcome is we want the outcome is we want the outcome is they want you happy they want you to feel compelled to move from this side over to this side and they're going to remove every roadblock that they can remove to make that happen besides giving it away for free so uh, I mean, you'd be like ah, i'm not going to use it unless it's free <laughs> From Christian Schmitz, I don't know if we got this one. Does conversion do more than just change the file extension? Yes, um, it does. I demoed that, uh, but what, how deep it is, I don't know. And I suspect that someone will figure out how to rewind that backwards. It'd be great. I'd love to have a live stream on that. Next question. Uh, does the conversion process convert 100% or are some things not able to be converted? Hmm. That's a good question. I think it converts the file 100% because there's really not that much there to do it. We had that one page. If those of you want to keep track of this page, uh, Josh Orman posted it, but it's right here. It's this differences between Claris and FileMaker platforms. The one that as I was looking through here, basically, you know, read this, but the one that I saw that was like, ugh, that you have to think about a little bit is the, you know, we have the URL, FMP URL. We haven't talked about the live streams too much. I actually presented at DEF CON. Margie, you were there with me. You helped me present on this at DEF CON. Discord questions. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Any questions at all? D -d 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 Claire Studios hosted only. Right for the now, time. Yes. For the time being, yes. Question. Uh, you know, it might be useful is to come back in a week and ha hammer this again in about a week with questions that come up. And, yeah, and, because there was, I honestly, I drowned in about 60 different questions. We only got to like a small portion of them and trying to sift through and grab the good ones is. I'll have to see if I can get with Andy LeCate to get him back on the show, Rick. Okay. Something like that or whatever. But yeah, I think that there's a lot of questions here. We want people to feel like there's answers and support. Um, and having a, an event like this after the fact is really, really useful. So, well, thank you a lot for, for doing it, Rich. Really, really appreciate it. So, oh, of course, I I'm, jumped on the opportunity to follow up with yesterday. Uh, I got the same thing. There were so many questions coming in the 45 minutes that I was presenting that we couldn't come close to answering them. Uh, I'm going to take that as a good sign. Um, that, it's always a worse sign to uh, have crickets. Oh yeah, crickets are really bad. We don't like crickets. Um, so I, I and, and talk about this with PM if they want to do an event or whatever. We don't want to run into each other, but yeah, ha coming back in a week and kind of recollecting all the questions and figuring out, you know, if management down there wants to, you know, have a certain foot forward on this because there really hasn't been a lot of official conversation that these are issues and we're going to address them. Basically, today is the first time we're saying, hey, really, we Claris wants to address these. We want to move everyone over here. So. When that happens, we don't know what what it might look like. We don't know, but we want to remove the roadblocks. 
So that's that's the critical element that you needed to take back with you when we're done here. So cool. All right, everyone, Mr. Taylor, I want to say thank you for putting together our Linux server at record pace this morning. Mm -hmm. Yep. Throw it, throw it together. Real live functional demo. We love it. Yep. All right, Rick Kalman, we greatly appreciate it. You have a good day. I'm going to go ahead and run the closing credits. Have a good one. Filemaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Filemaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir. Oh,